Have you ever wondered how different cultures look at the personality of the self? How personal strength helps an individual get through life? That's what we'll talk about today. Far too many people are looking for the right person instead of trying to be the right person. Gloria Steinem. Today we're going to finish up our series about different cultures around the world and how they see happiness and peoplehood and what it takes to be a strong person in the world. Some of this information is based on happiness found in translation by Tim Lomas, and other parts of it is found in other books and different blog articles that are referenced in the show notes. Today we're going to talk about how culture looks at an individual. We've talked about how culture looks at places, how it looks at our actions in different places, how it looks at the community. But today we're going to talk about what the individual is based on. There are so many different individual struggles that are out there. How can we look through the eyes of other places to see what it is that makes a person have a strong character, face hardships, can go through the struggles that they have in their lives and be stronger? The first one we're going to talk about is Sisu. It's a category of stoicism. It's a word that is Finnish in its culture, and it's a concept that the Finns see as a cultural identity, what they would call as grit or perseverance or really fighting through something. And Sisu is really about finishing the item, working through a problem with having the energy and everything it takes in order to follow it to the nth degree. I really like it. I really like this idea of grit. You know, we think about Angela Duckworth's book and her book on grit, but this idea that you can do it and you can overcome what it is you're trying to overcome. I think it's so amazing. I look around the world and I just see people give up. Can't do it. I'm not good at this. I can't make anything of myself. I'm just going to stay here in my world and just hide or not do this thing or not go after this thing. And it's really unfortunate that people don't have that grit or that ability to stick to something. It's something that's difficult, I think, for our time. Although the pandemic required quite a bit of grit and maybe it showed us what we were worth when it comes to grit. But sometimes it means persevering through something that may not be fun. We seem to be in a big culture of, well, if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. Or if it's not easy, I'm not going to do it. Or this is going to cause me a lot of pain and suffering. Therefore, I'm not going to do it. Instead, sometimes when you have to work through a problem, it requires you to do something tough, to do something unfun, maybe even do something unpopular, but that you know you're going to go through it, you're going to fulfill whatever it is you're going to do. Either because you told yourself you're going to do it, it's important to you that you uphold the things that you decide to do. It's important because other people are expecting it from you. Or even thinking about doing something like fighting in World War II. My grandfather fought in World War II. It was hard. He had to leave his family and he was the target of a lot of bad behavior by other people. But he persevered because it was important to accomplish what World War II was trying to accomplish. When something is hard to still keep doing something, even if it's difficult, even if you have to speak truth and have some courage when it's very difficult to do it. Maybe it's a physical difficulty, something that you're not quite strong enough to do, but persevering through that difficult time, whether it's emotional or physical, and making sure that you have that mental toughness to keep going. Then there's fiero, which is justified pride. I'm not much on pride in any sort of way. I think pride comes from that phrase, pride cometh before the fall. People, a lot of times when they have pride, that means they're about to go splat right into the sidewalk, right in front of their house. But when you have a justified joy in the hard work that you've done, in the things that you were able to stretch, your abilities, your mind, go that extra distance, Fiero is where you're getting that 
joy out of the outcome that you brought about, that you worked so hard to get. And so it's important that you separate it from unearthed vanity. This is Tim Lomas. Or that it's fake, where you're taking pride into something that wasn't great. It wasn't good for other people. Maybe you yelled at someone and now you're proud of yourself about it. Sure, you did it, but was it the right thing to do? But in this case, this is what Tim Loma says, putting your heart and soul into a worthwhile endeavor and then succeeding at all odds. I think that's amazing. Fiero, in that right moment, in that right way, is so important because it's a pat on the back for when we took that extra step. The next one, sorry, it's going to be a hard one for me to say, is a Dutch word, which is engelunkerdut. Boy, I hope I said that right. (laughs) Which is angelic patience. It means that you have this amazing ability to not get ruffled, to not get all upset when things go wrong. You know, you can go through and just... Endure something that's difficult, endure people who are trying your patience in such a way that it's just nice to see that amazing amount of patience and calm that you have with other people. I like this one because I happen to think that this might be a strength of mine. I rarely lose my cool. And to be honest with you, if I do lose my cool, a lot of times it freaks people out because it just never happens. That's a pretty good sign that you have a good set of patience working your way through impatience, if you are an impatient person and trying to gain some of that angelic patience would be a good characteristic to have because not only is it helpful for the people who are around you, but it's helpful for you not to feel so ruffled all the time. Then there's Nova Turient, which is a word that means that you're looking to change your life in a really big way that you're trying to change the way you think about things, either because of your own actions, you're trying to get away from the things that you're doing, you're trying to get away from your normal daily activities. Maybe you're going to take a trip that's going to change your perspective. Maybe you're going to learn a new skill or a new education that's going to change your life. Maybe you're going to finally reach out and go get that job that was scary to you, but it will mean so much to the way your life is. I think that that's what this podcast is about. It's trying to go out and seek and encourage real change or behavior in your life. And so I like this word. I don't know what culture it comes from. I think it's just a general term, but I like it quite a bit. Boy, I wish I could say this word, but here it is. Inugatic Gitaranic. I know I did not say that at all right, but it's a Inuit concept when it comes to respect about other people and that you try to bring harmony into your community, that you're committed to working with other people, showing respect for other people. And the reason I didn't put this one in the community podcast is because I think this aspect's a little bit different. It's about an individual having that sense of calm, focus, maturity, respect. It's the person who is actually making community a better place. So I do look this as an individual skill because it's one thing to say that we together as a community work together, but In order for that to work, it means that an individual has to have the fortitude and the strength and everything it takes to have that respect inside the community. There's Meriki, which means that it's love for what people do, their actions, what they make, their podcasts, their blog posts, their articles, but it's really about having what he says, enthusiasm and passion for behaviors, experiences. It's a Greek word. And Tim Loma says it was derived from Turkish, which is labor of love. But it means to be doing something creative, artistic, worked on something that was so hard, and you would just adore it. And it's not so much, again, I think like being vain about something, but it really means that you took your efforts and made something really wonderful about it. 
This next one's funny because it's tempest fugit, which means time flies. And that's an important way about how we see time. If we're just letting time run by us and our life run out, or are we taking advantage of what's important in our lives, in our time, and using it to our benefit, to the benefit around us? Time flies. It's a Latin word, and it was used in Star Trek when Roddy McDowell said, time is the fire in which we burn which is one of my favorite phrases. But when you think about just burning time, losing time, you realize it's about a campfire that has fuel in it and you wanna make the best use of it as you possibly can. One is a bit of a concept that I learned about when I was in Iceland that's called Theta Radist. I liked this because it summed up to me what I saw in the people in Iceland all the time. They were a very optimistic group of people. I enjoyed their hope, their optimism, their look at the future, and just the look of things around them. It's not so much this, oh, everything's going to work out kind of fluffy way of it, more of a stoic concept where things will work out. It's a realistic look at how things happen and knowing that we have the ideas, the strength, the hard work to make whatever problem we're facing better and make sure that it gets solved. It's almost more like a confidence that we will figure this out. And an article said that if Iceland were to have a national slogan, it would be Thetaredist. They know that sometimes it always doesn't work out the way that you hoped it would, but it will make it better. We will come up with a way and we will figure this out. And I know we're facing a lot of tough times around us. I know that there's troubles in the economy. We're getting over the pandemic. Have to keep that Icelandic challenge around us. Our next word comes from Yiddish, which is this amazing desire to do something you shouldn't do. Maybe the word itself is not a sign of character, but the ability to resist it is a sign of character. Sometimes you just want to do something when someone tells you you can't. Maybe you decided to start a business and someone said, don't do that. Are they right? Are they wrong? Do they have good reasons behind them? So being able to either embrace this word or fight this word off is a character strength. The next word is German, Fernweh, which means feeling homesick or longing for a place you've never been to. You ever watched a show, maybe one of these nature shows that shows you the most amazing land, a beautiful site, or a place that you've always wanted to go? I know I have friends who have always wanted to go to Paris and they long for it. Never been there. I think that's what that word is. But having that connection to a place, even though you've never physically been there yourself, that's a good word. Next word is from Japanese, shogunai, means to just give up something that is going to make you feel bad. There's nothing you can do. You shouldn't even spend time thinking about this anymore. In and of itself, it just means a word where you don't have any ability to do anything about. But recognizing this particular state of being is an important skill for us to have. Then there's mudita, which is Japanese again which means being happy for other people who are happy. When you see someone who's happy, doesn't that make you feel better? I know it makes me feel better, and that's a great personal strength to have when you can take joy in other people's joy and happiness too. This next word is German, Verschlimbesserung, which means that you intended to do something good, make something better, but instead you made the situation worse. Like, How I pronounce all these words in other languages. Clearly, these are amazing words, and I think I just make them worse. Then we have Kummerspeck, which is German, which literally means grief bacon. And it means that someone who put on weight because they're comfort eating, because you're having grief bacon. And I mean, who could really fault you about having grief bacon? It's not a personal strength, I'll admit it here, but... Isn't it an amazing word to have something that's called grief bacon? And then what you get is kidore, 
which means when you eat yourself into bankruptcy. But when you have grief bacon, how could you not eat yourself into bankruptcy? So I thought these two words go together. All right, I think I have to stop doing all these words I can't pronounce and just making things worse. So my challenge to you is to think about which one of these personal attitudes stuck with you. Which one do you like the most? And I want you to think about how this philosophy helps you kind of face tough times when you're trying to do something better in your life. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. I'm glad you're out there. Please remember that you can follow me on Twitter. I'm doing something with my Twitter account where I'm going to curate information, find new pieces of information and share it with you all. And please remember that you can make your life better with personal character by taking small steps.